Good morning, everybody. I'm very sorry that I couldn't join you in this important meeting, but I had some medical problems over the, the weekend I couldn't travel. Thank you very much for the invitation, and I think that the line uh, is good enough uh, to hear well what uh, I will be saying. Okay, uh, my starting point is the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development that I assume everybody knows. And the reason why I start from here is because uh, uh, the 2030 Agenda provides a really an overall and integrated vision of development based on the very well-known four pillars, economy, society, environment, and institution, institutions. But what does it mean to have an integrated view? So let me share with you just uh, one chart that uh, describes uh, a closed system according to the way in which uh, ecological economists have defined it uh, since 1997. This is the way in which our Earth system works. We exchange with the rest of the universe uh, solar energy and we put waste heat in the universe. Everything else uh, is managed within uh, the, our planet. And what we do is to take uh, natural capital, human capital, social capital, built capital, in order to uh, produce uh, GDP through a production process. Part of the GDP is reinvested to rebuild uh, the used capital or to uh, increase capital. Part of it is consumed for our well-being. The way in which the production process is uh, organized and managed, for example, using slaves or engaging workers in the management of the company uh, has an impact on people's well-being. On top, the way in which we produce and the way in which we consume creates waste. Waste in the sense of Pope Francis encyclica Laudato Si, published in 2015, both uh, physical wastes and human wastes. Of course, both of them have an impact on uh, well-being. We don't like uh, to leave our house in the morning uh, finding a lot of uh, rubbish outside of our house, but we don't like either to have uh, homelesses who sleep out of our uh, houses. On top, the physical waste has an impact on ecological services, which has uh, again, an impact on our well-being. And up to now, this is the scheme known uh, to ecological economies since 1997. Then I added one uh, box, which is the relationship between uh, human wastes and social system services, as I call them, which uh, uh, are provided for free from, by the society, including the trust, vision of future, peace. And of course, this is an important impact on well-being. Now, if we put the 17 sustainable development goals on this scheme, the SDGs uh, are not anymore just a list of targets uh, and uh, goals uh, identified through an international negotiation, but they look like a plan to change the world. And we immediately understand uh, where the different goals are in relation with the overall scheme that I mentioned to you. And so we have uh, food, uh, uh, health and education crucial, vital to build uh, human and social capital. We have innovation that drives investments. We have uh, the uh, environmental goals that have to do with natural capital and we have energy and work, decent work, at the core of the system, and so on and so forth. Now, the key issue here is how to change our education paradigm to uh, cope with this challenge, but also to foster the change towards sustainable development. 
I was part of the uh, world, uh, uh, the Global Commission of, uh, on the Future of Work uh, organized by the International Labour Office uh, over the last two years, and we published our report uh, in January. And I would suggest to look at the report, uh, which is about uh, human-centered uh, development uh, paradigm. And in that context, uh, our first recommendation is to create a new subjective right uh, in our um, legal uh, environments, the legal right uh, to word, sorry, to lock the lifelong uh, uh, learning. Because the lifelong learning uh, um, is the only thing that could help us humans to cope with the incredible challenges that an unsustainable world will put before us and already is putting before us, including the, our capacity to cope with the very fast changing working environment, including automation and robotization and so on and so forth. This is just to say that instead of uh, thinking to uh, specific policies, we ha really have to change uh, the basic uh, rights for people in order to help them to uh, live in a very complex world uh, and fast-changing world. Now, uh, if this is a, a possible legal reaction to what I just uh, mentioned, let me say something about uh, what we are doing in Italy now uh, to uh, educate people towards sustainable development. It's a quite unique experience, I think, in Italy now, because uh, as Italian Alliance for Sustainable Development, we have developed uh, some education tools, including uh, an e-learning course, which, by the way, is available also in English, if someone is interested. And now this is given to all Italian teachers of uh, elementary intermediate and high schools. And last year, over the last two years, almost 70,000 teachers have already taken our course. The Minister uh, of Education uh, wrote to all schools and to all universities saying sustainable development is a, a core piece of education for the future of our country. And uh, the Parliament has just passed a law about uh, the civic education in schools and the 2030 Agenda and Sustainable Development is part of the mandatory uh, elements of this new course. We provide uh, to teachers uh, a lot of uh, existing materials to be used uh, in their education efforts towards uh, not only environmental education but sustainable development. The point is that uh, as the chart that I described to you clearly shows, the education to sustainable development is education to complexity, to a holistic approach to the reality. And this is not what we normally teach. This is not what we normally teach in schools, but also at universities. This is why we have promoted the establishment of the Italian network of universities for sustainable development. This was uh, a declaration by the Association of Italian Rectors, and uh, now this uh, network includes 70 universities out of 80. And all of them in the manifesto that was signed in May during uh, the Italian Festival of Sustainable Development that we organize as ASVIS, Italian Alliance for Sustainable Development, uh, all the universities committed themselves to do mainly two things. First, change the way in which they manage their buildings, their activities, to move towards sustainable management, which means uh, waste management, energy management, mobility management, uh, and also the way in which uh, the cafeterias, the food is managed uh, in uh, universities. 
But then the second point is to change the way in which we educate to sustainable development. I'm personally chairing the subgroup that deals with education for sustainable development and to sustainable development for this network of universities. And in a couple of weeks, we will have a meeting where we will present to Italian rectors the action plan that we have built over the last six months. Already, a lot of universities are using as a lesson zero, if you wish, open to all their students our e-learning course on the 2030 agenda. But several courses are being established in Italian universities, both in-depth courses but also horizontal courses, in order to bring complexity into the uh, teaching in our Italian universities. A very important point, and I'm going towards the end, is that we don't only uh, focus, we don't have only focus on formal education, but it's very important to engage students in practical application of what they study. This is why some universities have engaged uh, uh, students in volunteering organizations, in the establishment of uh, environmental friendly environments, in initiatives uh, to clean up uh, the uh, environment surrounding the university, uh, also activities to uh, fight against uh, disabilities and uh, inequalities within universities and so on and so forth. So together with the formal education, we need really to engage new generations in changing the world. And especially after the incredible initiative by Greta Thunberg and others with the global strikes of students, we find an incredible openness in new generations to help in changing the world towards sustainable development, not only in screaming in our streets. So in conclusion, I think uh, that uh, education for sustainable development is the best way to help people to get an education towards a very uncertain future, a very complex future, but also to acquire the capacity of dealing with this complex world. The Italian experience with this network of universities, with this commitment by institutions to educate all citizens, especially young generations, to sustainable development and to 2030 agenda is very encouraging. Of course, a lot of things have to be set up, have a lot of resistances have to be addressed, but I think that our experience so far is quite uh, unique and we are very glad to share this uh, with other countries. So if you have any interest in what uh, uh, we have been doing, you can visit uh, the English page of the, uh, our website, asvis, A-S-V-I-S dot I-T, and write to us uh, all or through the organizers of this important conference. Please contact me and I will be happy to share with you our materials and activities. Thank you very much.